Two of the most major problems that people are considering when it comes to cost of moving to Texas are the astronomically high property taxes and flooding. No matter where you go in Texas, it can be an issue, but in San Antonio, it is not nearly as bad as it is everywhere else. And today we're gonna to completely break down the cost of living in San Antonio and all the details that come with it. Here's what we're gonna cover with the cost of living. We're gonna go over property taxes, groceries, transportation, utilities, housing, and then we're gonna hit a few special Texas specific costs that you may not have known about that you really need to consider whenever you are moving here. And then we're gonna talk about why flooding is not an issue that you need to worry about in San Antonio. It is no secret that Texas has extremely high property taxes. I mean, we're ranked 45 out of 50 when it comes to property taxes at a whopping 1.8% total rate on average across the state of Texas. And in the big cities, it's even worse. In San Antonio specifically, we have a 2.35% average property tax rate. Add that to our median price point of around 308,000 currently, and uh, we are gonna talk about some median prices later on when we go through housing. Uh, the property tax burden, the total property tax burden that you'd be looking at on average in San Antonio would be right around that $7,200 a year mark. I mean, it's, it's no, no cheap, easy thing for paying property taxes. Even if you come here and pay cash, you still got a pretty good payment just for those property taxes. Now, compared to other big cities in Texas, we are actually not nearly as bad. We are second only behind Houston whenever it comes the, to the lowest total property tax burden based off your median price point and the total property tax value. Um, so looking at that is, is a big consideration if you're considering you know, whether to move here, Austin, Houston, or Dallas. Now I do also break that down a little bit in more depth on the ultimate guide to moving to San Antonio, which you can check out, it's another video on this channel. Now obviously, nobody wants to spend $600 a month on a property tax. Like any tax that you have to spend money on is something that you don't wanna to, want to pay, right? But I can tell you the property tax does go to some good uses, right? It's not like we're having to pay the property taxes that are this high, in addition to an income, a state income tax. So you get that wiped off if you're coming from one of those places like California that have a very, very high state income tax in addition to their property tax. So the total tax burden is not nearly as bad, you know, whenever you look at it overall. But uh, the issue comes down to what is the property taxes being even used for? The property taxes are gonna fund your public schools, your emergency services, your state and city infrastructure. I mean, pretty much everything local gets funded through the local property taxes. You can go to any different county, um, for San Antonio specifically, it's Bear County or if New Braunfels, Comal County or Seguin, Guadalupe County. So all those different counties have their own appraisal district website. You can go to that website, search any property that you're looking at. So say you find something on realtor.com or Zillow or on my website, and you can so go in and plug in that address to which specific county's website that it's in, and it'll tell you the breakdown of the property taxes. It'll show you the history that you can find, um, and it kind of shows you exactly where each property tax you know, is going. Um, the biggest thing with those websites is it'll also differentiate between where the high rates are and where the lower rates are, because if you didn't know this, it's not one flat rate across all over the place. Like I said, it's for each public school has their own specific tax rate. Each different emergency service district has their own tax rate. Each county has their own tax rate. It, it is literally can be different from one house on one street to the next street over. It can be completely different. It is a huge consideration when you're looking at homes for sale. You gotta look at it for every single home. Uh, it's something that I do with my clients all the time. So uh, it's a big, uh, a big deal that you just gotta pay attention to whenever you're doing it. Now, getting into how you can get some relief from these property taxes. There are definitely exemptions. Texas is by far one of the friendliest states when it comes to veterans, whenever it comes to this exemption. If you are a 100% disabled vet and you have that rating through the VA, you can get your property taxes completely waived. I mean, 100% no property taxes that you ever have to pay if you're a 100% disabled vet. One of the biggest reasons why a lot of people move to Military City USA in San Antonio. So if you're not a 100% disabled vet, you can get uh, other property tax uh, decreases, but it's not nearly as much like if you have a 90% rating, you don't get 90% of your property taxes you know, removed. I mean, it doesn't work quite that way, even though I think it maybe should. Um, and then you also have other types of exemptions. And the homestead exemption that you can get, uh, homestead exemption limits the amount of, that they can increase your taxes every year. That's another thing in Texas, they reassess the taxes every year. So if the values go up, taxes go up as well. So last couple of years, that was a big issue. This year, that shouldn't be as big of an issue. Now that rates have kind of, or that uh, the growth is kind of stagnated, uh, we're gonna see a lot more, um, you know, 
tax values that either hopefully stay the same or maybe even come down slightly. Sometimes they're a little bit different than what the you know the overall market is actually doing. They'll kind of focus more micro on each different area, like for Seguin, New Braunfels, you know, and different areas of San Antonio like that. The homestead exemption also decreases the amount of school taxes that you pay. So that is the most, uh, the highest part of your property taxes is through the schools. I mean, you're going to look at most of the time, you're probably looking at like almost half of your property taxes is going for the schools, for the public schools locally. Uh, and so you can use that homestead exemption and it saves you, you know, anywhere between, you know, two to four hundred dollars on the total property tax burden every year another big one that is a big deal for a lot of people is the 65 and over homestead exemption what that homestead exemption does is the same thing as the other exemption plus a little bit extra i believe and it locks your value whenever you move here so say you're moving here and you want to buy a property cash you don't want to have to pay property taxes and increase those property taxes every year you're on a fixed income potentially with your retirement you get that homestead exemption and it locks your value in whenever you buy that home. So you don't ever have to pay additional property taxes every year. It's the same value, same property tax amount that you're going to pay year over year. Um, and then, you know, you're kind of set at least at that from that aspect. One other thing to consider is that if you live out of the city limits, especially out of the San Antonio city limits, your property taxes are going to be drastically lower than if you were in the city. So you get to cut all those city taxes um, out completely. Um, and then it, you know, out in even areas like in different counties, like in you know, Coma County, Guadalupe County, even up north in Kendall County, you have some of the lowest property tax ratings in the area where you're looking at you know, anywhere from like 2% instead of that 2.35% all the way down to like 1.8% in certain areas. And even a little bit lower, I believe. I think it gets down to like 1.6, 1.75% in certain areas. So just finding these different little neighborhoods like this is a big lifesaver whenever you're looking at trying to reduce that property tax burden. Now looking at groceries. Groceries is obviously a big deal. Going out to eat is a big deal and so are the groceries, but we're going to focus on the groceries specifically. You go out to eat, I'll just tell you from my personal experience, whenever I'm taking my family for out to eat, it's around 40 bucks to eat. I mean, it is, you know, most, most restaurants, if we get some, uh, a lot of drinks, get appetizers, you know, you're looking at 50, 60 bucks. Kind of normal stuff, I would say, uh, all over the country for the most part. Now, looking at groceries. So, HEB and Costco are going to be your number one sources of grocery shopping around here. You also have Sam's Club. You have some other places. You know, there are some Whole Foods around here, Sprouts Market. Um, there are a couple Kroger's. We've actually shopped at Kroger here recently. They're doing this, like, free delivery thing, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so, they're getting delivery delivering our groceries all the way out here so we don't have to go to the store. Anyways, HEB is the big one that you're going to want to focus on. Uh, the average grocery bill per month for a family of four is around $852. Now take that with a grain of salt because depending on what you're going to buy, it's going to be a lot less, going to be a lot more. It just depends on your lifestyle, but that's your average. HEB is going to be the main place that you're going to do all your grocery shopping, especially if you're in San Antonio. Um, me personally, with my family, um, we kind of splurge a little bit. We don't eat out a whole lot, so we buy a lot of stuff to where we stay in and eat. We spend about $1,000 a month for the four of us. And just so you know, too, if you have not heard of HEB, HEB is a staple of Texas. I mean, I think they've won awards for like best grocery store in the entire country before. Um, I've actually had people that have moved here specifically to be closer to HEB. Now on that note, real quick, I want to remind you guys that I am your local San Antonio relocation real estate agent. So if you have any questions whatsoever about moving to San Antonio or what it takes to move across the country, give me a call and we can talk about exactly what that would take and go over your options. I've literally lived here in the San Antonio area for my entire life and I've helped tons of people just like you move to the San Antonio area, whether they're moving back here or they were moving here for the first time uh, from all over the country, even from you know, different countries. Uh, so if you have any questions, like I said, uh, do not hesitate to reach out. You can call, text, email me, or better yet, set up a Zoom call if you want to meet up face-to-face. -face. Um, all that information is down below and um, in the description below as well. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel and comment any questions that you have, guys. I mean, I'm seriously an open book, so any issues at all that you're coming across whenever you're researching San Antonio, any questions, additional questions that I'm not covering, put them down there and I will get to them. I promise you guys. Um, also, be sure to share this video if you're getting any value at all. I would really appreciate you sending it to somebody else that you know could possibly be interested in this. Um, now, I know I've kind of rambled a little bit here. Let's get back into it. We're going to go over the transportation costs now. So one of the negatives about San Antonio that a lot of people talk about is that our public transportation is not the greatest. So unless you are living in the downtown and immediate inner city area, 
your public transportation opportunities are going to be very minimal. Uh, more than likely, you're going to have to own a car. So you got to factor that in. Obviously, you know, car prices range all over the place, but um, you're going to need something to get you around the city if you're not in that immediate downtown area and close to your work. So you're going to have to think about the cost, cost of the car itself. You're going to have to look at the car insurance and then the gas prices. So the gas prices in San Antonio, you're looking at the national average right now in March of 2023, we're looking at $3.37 a gallon on average all over the country. It's over you know, four high fours and $5 a gallon over in California. But here we're looking at an average of about $2.90. I actually just filled up for $2.65 the other day. So there's you know, a lot, lot lower options as well. Now, when you're looking at auto insurance, San Antonio is actually way lower than the national average. San Antonio's average uh, yearly auto insurance premium is 1857, 1857. That is lower than the 2014 uh, average that the entire country has. And I can tell you that that number itself is even a little bit high. If you have a good clean driving record, you have a good car, then you're gonna be looking well below that. Uh, I can tell you just from my personal experience, we have two vehicles and we're paying a little over $1,200 total per year on those. Now, we do pay a yearly uh, premium so that we can get some discounts on that. It saves us a few hundred dollars a year. So if you're in the position to do that, by all means, go for it. I think that's a good option as well to save some money. Um, but looking at it, San Antonio, again, like everything else, we're a little bit lower than the national average when it comes to auto insurance. Now looking at utilities, it is pretty common knowledge for the most part, maybe not so much, that Texas is actually a deregulated electric industry. So we have uh, options in, in majority of places to where you can go shop around for who's providing your electric. That is not the case in the San Antonio area. So San Antonio area is not a deregulated industry. So we have CPS Energy in San Antonio. Um, if you're out, you know, East, uh, going out towards New Braunfels and Seguin, you're looking at like GVC uh, and then NBU if you're in New Braunfels. I've talked about some issues with NBU in past videos as well. Uh, but uh, so you, you, you don't get that luxury of shopping around, so you pay the rate. But again, I have seen um, a lot of people talk about that actually that actually benefits you and that you actually get a little bit better rates than some of those other places. I don't know how that exactly works. Maybe there's some different rules that you know keep them from charging too much, but um, basically when you're looking at utilities, it's kind of what you're gonna pay. Your electric bill on average is gonna be about $147 a month um, in the San Antonio area compared to a national average of just a little over $200 a month. And the average for all of Texas as a whole is about $168 a month. So a lot lower than that as well. In San Antonio, our water provider is SAWS, San Antonio Water System, and the average water bill for SAWS is about $67 or so, a little less than that actually. but they are actually getting ready to decrease that. They're actually going to lower the rate. So you're going to see about an eight to, you know, 9% decrease um, in the overall water bill. And that's not for everybody though. That's only for like, I think like 80 ish percent of the total residents that are on sauce. Another big thing is natural gas. A lot of people come here that I'm working with are asking to be in natural gas communities so they can have gas cooking, gas heating. And I would hundred percent agree. I have gas and I actually have propane in my own home. Kind of similar, it doesn't work exactly the same. Same concept though. Uh, but a lot of people request gas just because of its higher efficiency, cooks quicker, heats quicker, just a lot easier to use in electric heat and electric cooking. When you're looking overall at the San Antonio market, we have a really good portion of the homes that are for sale currently that are in natural gas and propane uh, neighborhoods, about 40% or so. So there are quite a few options out there whenever it comes to looking for something like that. Now look, if you're looking at like the total cost, so just, for round numbers, obviously this isn't the exact averages that I mentioned a minute ago, but if you're looking at CPS as a whole, say your average you know, electric bill is about $155 a month. If you go and add on natural gas to that, your electric bill and your natural gas bill is now gonna go up to about $190 a month whenever you add about the average of natural gas to the average of the electric. But that does not decrease the electric bill at all. So if you decrease your electric bill, obviously your, your you know, usage and your total bill is going to go down a little bit as well. Now, I'll give you a quick example of this. So in my previous home before the one I'm in now, um, we had about 2000 square foot home. It uh, had heat uh, that was natural gas and it had a tankless water heater that was natural gas as well. Our electric bill for that on the hottest days in the summer was about 80 to 90 bucks. And we were paying about 35, $40 a month for natural gas. So, I mean, it, it was a really, really good deal. Now, it was before the uh, most, you know, the crazy winter storm of a couple years ago. So the rates have gone up since then a little bit, but 
it was still you know, way, way better than if we would have electric. We probably would have had a $150 a month bill overall just for having just electric for those. And just to give you some more details whenever it comes to gas versus electric, gas, natural gas especially, whenever it comes to heating your home, is twice as efficient as electricity. So, you know, just take that with, uh, you know, for what it's worth. And then also think about this. And overall, looking at the utilities in San Antonio, you're looking at a 11.3% cheaper utility average than the national average. Now let's get into housing, the crazy hot button topic of the current times that we're in. Everybody thinks we're going into this housing crash. Well, I say not everybody. Everybody in the national media who always likes to you know, scream chicken little and say the sky is falling is saying that we are headed into a housing crash. Housing correction, definitely. Definitely needed it. It was well overdue. We needed something to happen with this because we could not sustain over the last couple of years what we've been doing. So housing costs have increased dramatically. I mean, if you go look at some of my older videos, you're going to see me talking about median and average prices in the low 200s in San Antonio. And we're not in those days anymore. Our median price currently as it sits as of, you know, like January, February of 2023 is that, like I mentioned, that 308-ish thousand uh, dollar point. That's the median for all single family homes. Now, if you look at what has been happening in the market, just to give you a quick rundown of exactly where that's going. Um, July 2023 was whenever rates skyrocketed. That's when everything kind of hit a screeching halt and we stopped with this crazy market that we had over the last couple of years. When you look at where we're at now, right now, from that point in July, the median price has actually gone down about 9%. Now, you do have to consider the, the timing of everything and going into the winter, going into the holidays, always decreases a little bit compared to what it's like in the summer. So seasonally adjusted, you know, you have to take that into consideration. I've seen some people talk about, you know, it's seasonally adjusted to about like a 4% drop. So very minimal whenever it comes to that. Now, if you look at year over year though, from this time last year where we're at to now, the prices have still gone up. So that drastically high, crazy market that we were at at the beginning of 2022, we have still gone up from that point. So we haven't dropped year over year yet. Um, and I don't necessarily expect that to happen either because even though we've kind of statistically dropped a little bit between July and now, I'm thinking that when these numbers come out for February and especially March, that that number is going to start going back up again. Housing prices are going to be affected a lot by these interest rates. I mean, we're hovering right close to that upper sixes, 7% rate right now. But a lot of the economists out there are kind of expecting that we're, you know, we could possibly see a recession in the next few months. And once recessions hit, historically, when recession happens, rates go lower. So we could see a lot lower rates by the end of this year. A lot of people are thinking we're going to be in that fives, mid to fives, mid to high fives, you know, rate by the end of this year. Now, so where does that put you as far as what your monthly payment would look like? So calculating out your property taxes, your homeowner's insurance over the year, and your monthly principal and interest payments that you're having to pay. Um, if you're doing like an FHA, you know, three and a half percent down loan, looking at the average price of 308, you know, 243, I think is what it is, and the uh, using the average property tax rate of 2.35 percent, your monthly mortgage payment at that price is going to be a little over $2,600 a month. It's pretty steep. Now, if you're looking at putting 20 percent down, you're going to drop that down to a little over $2,300 a month. So that's kind of what you're looking like if you're looking to buy a home currently at the 6.5% interest rate also, forgot to mention that. Now, if you're looking at rentals, average apartment rental in San Antonio is a little over $1,300 a month right now, between that $1,300 and $1,400 a month. So obviously, if you're looking to save some money, you can pay 100% interest in a rental and you know pay $1,300, $1,400 a month. But again, I think it's super important to get comfortable, especially if you're moving to a new area, Find a place that you're comfortable. If you know exactly where you want to be, buy that house now, get after it. Um, but again, if you think you're willing to wait for interest rates to go down, I think that personally that it could be a really good option. It just depends on what your personal lifestyle is like. If you really don't want to wait, if you need to be here in a month, then we got to find you something. We can work on buying down the rate, talk to the, you know, the, the new sales counselors about, uh, new home sales counselors about buying down the rate, which a lot of them are doing right now. I just had somebody close at 4.75% a couple weeks ago. Um, I've had people, you know, lock in for around 5%. So it is a really, really good time to buy new construction. And then if you're looking at resales, we can look at getting closing costs covered, use that to buy down the rate also. So there's lots of options when it comes to that to get away from, you know, these higher rates that are really making affordability a challenge right now. Now, again, kind of feeding off the fact that San Antonio is a lot more affordable than all these other big cities in Texas, let's look at homeowners insurance. So I've talked about this in my other video as well, but looking at San Antonio, the average about 2317 
for homeowners insurance for the year. Um, like I mentioned, uh, I have a newer home, but my homeowners insurance is a little more than half of that. So you could potentially have a lot better, um, you know, home insurance price than this, if, especially if you get a new home and a smaller home. Uh, those tend to have, you know, a lot, obviously a lot less uh, homeowners insurance premiums as well. Uh, but when you look at Austin, Austin is just slightly above what San Antonio's at, and then Dallas and Houston are way higher. They're up at over 3,000 on the average for, for homeowners insurance. And a lot of that has to do with the, the weather there. I mean, in Dallas, you get a lot, it's a lot colder. You got a lot more wind storms, tornadoes and things that come through there. Uh, hail storms. We do get hail storms here, but not nearly as bad as Dallas. And then Houston, of course, you know, closer to the coast, you got the flooding and everything like that that could happen from hurricanes and, and all those issues that come with that. Now, another big issue that people are super concerned about whenever it comes to Texas is the HOAs. HOAs is a hot button topic as well. Everybody thinks that this HOA is going to come in and tell you exactly everything you can and can't do inside your home, all, you know, all that stuff. It's not really the case. Most of these HOAs around here, I mean, the majority of the homes in San Antonio are going to be within an HOA. I mean, it's over, it's over two thirds uh, of the home. So you're looking at um, majority in that three to $500 total per year cost for the HOA. A lot of these will have a great amenity center, pool, clubhouse, parks, trails, all that kind of stuff. Those keep up the entrance to the neighborhood, keep it looking clean. So that's, they're really great for that. And that's mostly where that cost goes for. And that's mostly what these HOAs do. They will occasionally go through and drive the neighborhood, make sure that you know everybody's keeping their stuff clean. Um, some HOAs are a lot more strict than others. If you leave a trash can out, they'll send you a notice, but they're not going to find you for it right away. So you just have to you know play by the rules a little bit. The rules are going to be a lot more. They look a lot more stringent than they actually are, um, but and they're they're not as big of a deal as as people make it out to be. I mean, I'm in an HOA. It's three hundred dollars a year. It's it's honestly pointless. I don't think there's any real reason for it to have. We don't have any amenities. But again, that's what a lot of these are like. Is you pay. For, you know a fee for them to keep everybody looking the same and um, make sure that they're not trashing their yards and they're dumping you know old cars in their front yard so that's the majority of what these HOAs are for in Texas anyways now we've hit those major points now we're going to talk about the special Texas cost the special Texas costs apply all over it's not just isolated to San Antonio but there's uh, you know what we're going to talk about is specifically for San Antonio of course first one that we're going to talk about is going to be pest control it is no secret, there's a lot of critters running around Texas. So we have, you know, scorpions, we have spiders, we have, you know, roaches and those types of things. I had never seen a flying roach. I did see that comment from somebody. Uh, don't ever think I've ever seen a flying roach going across my yard or in my house for that matter at all. Uh, the biggest issues that we have are little tiny spiders, little silver fish, little bugs, just cause it's kind of wet around here. You know, we have a lot of lakes and rivers and stuff. Um, and the scorpions, I promise you, they're not like the Arizona scorpions where they come out and kind of try to steal your cats and dogs. That's how big they are. They're little tiny things, you know, maybe a couple inches across. Really to step on this question. I mean, <laughs> I've seen spiders bigger than scorpions around here. Uh, so not really a big thing you got to worry about. But I can tell you, me personally, I live out in the country. I have acreage. Um, so I get pest control regularly. Once a quarter is what you can kind of expect. We have a higher priced uh, pest control company that we use just because he's really good. And whenever he comes, we don't have any issues at all. Um, he's about $150 every quarter. And then occasionally he'll charge a little bit more just to go up in the attic and spray you know, the yard and do those types of things. So that is a, a big cost that I think is super worth getting so you don't have to worry about any of those creepy crawlies in the house. Now the second cost, and this is about flood insurance. Like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about flooding here. So in San Antonio specifically, if you look at a couple different sites, it, they talk about about a 16% chance that your your home has a one in four chance that you will flood in 30 years. I mean, it's if you look at it, it's very, very, very minimal. Uh, looking at Houston, Houston is double that. Austin and Dallas are about half of what San Antonio is at 7% each. Um, Houston's about 31%. But if you look at the total number of flood insurance policies actually active. That's the number that I think is most telling. You look at Houston, you're over 150,000 flood insurance policies in Houston. San Antonio, just barely over 5,000. And if you do happen to get in an area in San Antonio where you are in a flood plain and you do have to get flood insurance, most of the time that's only going to be those waterfront properties or properties that are really close to a lake or a river or a creek or something like that. 
very rare overall in the entirety of San Antonio. There's some creeks and rivers that run through the town especially, but the majority of these are like along the Guadalupe River and New Braunfels and Seguin. Um, and the, the average flood insurance policy, and granted, it's just an average, so there's some I know of that are a lot more than this, especially if you're right on the river, is $762 a year total. So it's not a huge, huge expense. I mean, you're looking at a little over $50 a month overall. So it's not a big, massive thing that um, everybody makes a huge deal about. And it's definitely not something, even when Harvey came through, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, Harvey came through Rockport down just south of San Antonio. They came up through San Antonio, dumped here. It rained probably 17 inches. We had a little bit of flooding in some of the creeks and everything, but I didn't hear about any houses that actually flooded during that. And then Harvey went to Houston after that, went back in the Gulf and then went back to Houston. And that's where the issues happened with, with, with Houston whenever it came to Hurricane Harvey. So um, it is not an issue around here at all, really, that I even you know am ever concerned about. And the last thing that you have to consider, especially if you're looking at a new build neighborhood, is the MUD tax. And MUD stands for Municipal Utility District. And what that is is essentially a uh, governing district, governing body that the county puts together for these developers to put utilities in these new neighborhoods. Um, it's very few and far between. There's not too many of these around here, but what you can expect to do from these is that they put basically the wastewater treatment plant in the neighborhood itself. Um, they have all the infrastructures for the roads, sidewalks, the, you know, the, the gas lines, the wastewater lines, sewer lines, the water pipes that go through, all that stuff. Massive, uh, you know, improvement project for this, but they basically charge the resident, which is I kind of find weird on this. So what this mud tax is actually is that it adds additional property taxes to the neighborhood for the mud for the municipal utility district. So it gets rid of basically the city taxes and adds on to that. So if, for instance, looking at Johnson Ranch in Bolverde, the app, the tax rate there is two point six six percent, and quite high, right? the mud tax is 0.84%, so almost as high as the school taxes. And, and what it does is it adds that on top of the total rate after it gets rid of the, you know, the city of Bolverde property tax rate. Um, whereas, you know, if you weren't in Johnson Ranch and you're in Bolverde, you're looking at like a 1.9 something property tax rate. So way, way lower, it's a big cost difference. So you just need to make sure that if you're looking at these new neighborhoods, pay attention to the tax rate. It's like I mentioned earlier, look at every single property tax rate because each neighborhood is going to be different and it's going to make a big deal of difference whenever it comes to your affordability. If you're paying 2.66 versus 1.9, massive difference, especially if you get up to like the four or $500,000 homes. Now, like I talked about guys, this video right here is actually a really good video for you to check out if you're moving to San Antonio. It is the ultimate guide to moving to San Antonio. It tells you anything and everything you need to know, including explaining some of these things I talked about in this video in a little bit more depth. Now, if you have any other questions, like I said, at all, do not hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I will see y'all in the next video.